interesting me getting into the Big Finish Gallifrey Time War sets as late as I have. I only really started listening to them like just a couple of years ago, but they have been going on for approaching about 20 years now. This massive back catalogue of Gallifrey centric stories, which then evolve into covering the Time War and everything happening with who we will now call Hot Rassilon, played by Richard Armitage. The Gallifrey set has got a really committed and devoted fan base who have been following the story for 20 years. So for me to just sort of like join into towards like the tail end right now makes me feel like a bit of an imposter when it comes to when it comes to reviewing these things but reviewing them I am because last year I covered Gallifrey War Room Volume 1 Allegiance which I thought was a a mixed box set leaning on the good some good ideas but I think that the format needed a bit of work and some of the stories weren't quite as engaging as I think the other Time War stuff that they've done specifically with the War Doctor. I kind of went into Gallifrey War Room Volume 2 maneuvers with kind of mixed expectations i, I want to really be on board for these sets especially because you know i am kind of rooting for the writers as well full disclosure theo treatherway is somebody who i've collabed with before they did my thumbnail for the doctor who review of hyde and also georgia cook is lovely and awesome artist uh catherine armitage did a terrific ninth doctor story about the the making of the football league a few months ago it was a ninth doctor set that was really really good so i'm really rooting for the talent on board and i do think that there's so much potential in the idea of the behind the scenes council the war room of gallifrey where the war doctor is everything on the front line and then war room is everything behind the scenes that's the approach that i think they really should be taking and i'm very happy to say that with maneuvers this is the box set that i wanted this range to be from the beginning maneuvers is a really good four-part political thriller i almost want to say it's like the west wing but the west wing is kind of like dated ho-hum milquetoast liberal politics during what was the thought to be a super optimistic time but that was revealed to very quickly not be the case gallifrey war room 2 is more akin to something like succession or a much more serious version of the thick of it what we have a four-part story collaborators by Catherine armitage remnants by georgia cook transference by theo treatherway and ambitions debt by Catherine armitage so collaborators starts with gallifrey wanting to align itself with another planet which has got time winds that uh, circle around the planet as a impenetrable force field for the time lords and the daleks it is run on a material called Bolt, or Bolteric Acid. The planet is called Orison, and the General, played by Kem Bones, and Leela, played by Louise Jameson, go down onto the planet through the time winds because there is, there's some religious significance where the priests have to read the time winds and then they use those predictions in order to let people in the time winds basically the bolt or I'll, ref, I'll refer to it from now on and the time lords want that bolt because it can be used as a very effective and deadly weapon they even demonstrate it early on in the story let's play a clip from collaborators Alpha Cognosco Base Demonstration uh, 289 of Prototype Weapon Zelta B. You're late. I am sorry. I was... With new recruits. You were training new recruits. I see. Targets I... are four Dalek casings. Warrior Class Mark 12. Take aim. Fire! <laughs> My word. That was only two rounds. Such destruction created so easily. Good of you to join us, Leela. Where were you? I was with new recruits. Clearly these weapons are worth the effort. The war room must send a delegation to Orison and broker an alliance immediately. Then we can source the bolt we need to get these weapons into production. A, a delegation? Problem, Leela? It is unusual for Gallifrey to ask politely when you could just take what you want. Why the change? Yes, do tell us why, Rasmus. Orison is ringed by a belt of time winds. The only way through is for one of their priests to plot us a course. It seems a lot of effort to placate one small planet. Is there not another source of Bolt? Our scientists have yet to find one. Hmm. To my mind, it's an easy decision. Unless you have some reason you don't want these new weapons. I'm simply weighing up what might be the best use of our time and resources. So that's basically the inciting incident. They want the bolt, they go to Orison in order to essentially force the people of the planet in order to hand it over. You've got Ferdy, who is the newly ascended 
prince or king of the planet, played by James Corrigan. And I think that James Corrigan is one of the best guest stars that we've had in a big finish box set this year. Somebody who starts off as a really optimistic princely king character who wants to try and live up to the father's looming shadow who has recently passed away and succeeded the throne. And he just does not have it in him and he can't let on. And he really wants to try and make a good impression to the Time Lords, but the Time Lords are just as morally corrupt in some senses as the Daleks are. So that's where you get the moral dilemma of throwing Leela into a discussion like this, where you've got essentially Ken Bones as the general trying to play good cop, bad cop, but they really underestimate how good a cop Leela is. Where the general is like, we can offer you all of this stuff, we can offer you all of this protection from the Daleks, and Leela is like, if you say no, they will kill you. If you say no, they will take it by force. That kind of messes up the negotiation somewhat, but Leela is such an inherently honest character. I think the comparison that I made last year for Gallifrey War Room 1 was that Leela is like the Captain America of the Doctor Who franchise, where she is so inherently good and pure that you throw them into a scenario and then they work like a reverse virus to try and get all of the bad toxins out. But you're in the time war. Everything is toxin. And that dynamic is really, really refreshing. I think that Collaborators is a really effective political drama. And what I'll say about Maneuvers overall, if you're wanting a lot of frontline stuff, if you're wanting a lot of epic battles across time and space, or the, the Daleks wanting to throw a solar system like they tried to do in one of the War Doctor box sets, you're not going to get it here. But I think that's where this carves its own niche into the Doctor Who universe really effectively. That's what I want these box sets to be. Very lengthy excessive conversation sequences between morally dubious characters with Leela thrown into the middle of it. You also do have Narvin, played by Sean Carlson, who is part of the Gallifreyan Resistance, a small group of Time Lords trying to end the Time War through a more overt way of overthrowing the, the Time Lords themselves in order to try and see another way out of the conflict. And there's a really cool idea where there's like a slice of the Matrix where Narvin and Leela are able to have these private conversations, but it's removed from time. So what happens is that Leela says, we're going to this planet to try and get the bolt, not knowing that Narvin is actually a week behind so that he can use that information and go to the planet and try and broker a deal first between the resistance and the people of Orison. Really cool idea, really inspired, like unique to Doctor Who time war settings and the Matrix and Gallifrey. It's finding new ways to explore Doctor Who lore and I think Catherine Armitage in both this and also Ambition's Debt which is essentially a two-part story. There's this, there are these middle chapters as well where the characters develop, but Ambition's debt follows on from the events and the consequences of collaborators. But let's talk about Remnants by Georgia Cook. Now, what happens? The General receives a distress signal uh, from a Time Lord ship that is running experiments and weapons testing. It's a bunch of Time Lord recent graduates, some people who are fresh out of the Academy, and they think that they're able to defend themselves. However, they have been attacked by a Dalek ship. There's a scientist Dalek core ship that is orbiting the mostly destroyed spaceship for unknown reasons. So the Time Lords sneak on board with their TARDISes and survey the situation. Let's play a clip from Remnants. Search for recognizable insignias. How did they die? Hard to say. I'm seeing Academy colors. Definitely humanoid, but the impact damage. Taken by surprise, given the state of them. No chance to regenerate. A single Dalek attack squad managed all this. These were Academy graduates. Time Lords. What about their training? I... I don't think this was an attack squad. The type of destruction, the slaughter. Could it have been a berserker, darling? A berserker? We've only a few battlefield reports. Deployed for mass eradication, to send one into an enclosed space. From what little we know, it's a new breed of weapon, even to the Daleks. Now, weapons require testing, observation, by a science division. You're not suggesting oh, how better to test a prototype. Easily monitored, closely confined, a genocide machine unleashed on a station full of students. 
like sending a cat into a nest of mice. It makes a terrible kind of sense in it. Ruthless, evil, but sense all the same. So Remnants has got a few issues kind of up front just by virtue of the type of story that it's telling. And I don't mean this as like any sort of disrespect to Georgia Cook. I feel like she might have been dealt a short straw with this story because the idea of a bunch of Time Lords in the Time War in a mostly abandoned facility with a single Berserker Dalek which is trying to kill them. If that sounds familiar to you, that's because it was essentially an almost identical plot to a War Doctor Begins set, Berserker, by Timothy X Attack. And I understand that it's different because that was a War Doctor Begins story, and this one in Gallifrey War Room 2 is a General Rasmus and Vecklin story. There's no Doctor to be found here, of course. But the fact that there are so many similarities in structure, in premise, in even the villain and the setting and everything, that it was so noticeable... This release was only a few months ago as well. This came out in May and this came out in September. There's only a few months between these releases. That's a bit of an issue. It became noticeable and it became quite distracting. It kind of, it, it encourages comparisons, which I think was a bit unfortunate in terms of the timing of these releases. And also the Berserker Dalek as well. We first met them in the War Doctor Begins Battlegrounds, the Rewind story, and they were depicted as like this planet-sized cloud that was working its way across this planet in the story that was just devouring and destroying everything. And then we hear the one in that Berserker story from a few months back, and now we've got another one here. And I think that the more we hear of the Berserker, the less interesting they become. And we've also got this design here on the cover with the Dalek with the, with the saw on one arm and the minigun on the other, and it's got these caterpillar treads and everything on the floor. I actually think this is significantly less impactful than the idea of the death cloud. And I think that the more that they're using the berserkers, the less interesting they are. That being said, I still think that Georgia Cook was able to take those handicaps for the story, at least in my subjective opinion, that I think that those are handicaps for the story, and still concoct a thrilling base under siege story where they're trying to sneak out these Gallifreyan graduates where one of them's got a personal tie to the general as well once again played by Ken Bones the cast here are terrific and I also think it's so good to have a story that doesn't feature Leela that much the general Rasmus and Vecklin I think just dropping these three into a scenario and seeing how they respond to it is really interesting with the war doctor in that berserker story you kind of know what he's going to be like. You kind of know what to expect from that type of story. I loved the way that Berserker ended, setting up all the stuff with the pseudo-companion Cass. But apart from that, I felt like it was a little bit pedestrian. But I do think that with Remnants, though... These are really interesting characters with their own agendas and their own betrayals. And they've got their own things that they're wanting to do on this ship. And all of the others... It's it's a really fascinating dynamic. And of course, the cast are terrific as well. I do love Rasmus, played by Chris Jarman. He is like such an underrated part of these stories. And I think that in this box set, he really comes into his own. I'm sure he's been in previous ones and he's been great in those before. Like I said, I'm a bit of a late adopter to the Time War Gallifrey box sets. I apologize. I'm sure he's been great in other ones. But this one is where I'm really starting to notice him. And I love his dynamic, in particular with the general. They speak in code so much. <laughs> And I really, really like it. And of course, Beth Chalmers as Vecklin is great as usual. And I also love how she's trying to essentially brown nose Alistra. I think Alistra, played by Caroline Pickles, who's stepping into the shoes of the late great Jacqueline Pierce. I think that she's doing a great job. But of course, she is confined to Gallifrey. She is a matrix projection of Alistra for the purposes of the war room. So seeing how Vecklin acts outside of the citadel when she's away from Alistra and what allegiances she really has that's an interesting dynamic and I thought that Georgia Cook did a really great job with that like I said the the inclusion of the berserker Dalek and the fact that it is a very similar setting and premise to a time war story from a few months back that's the main distraction holding this back other than that Remnants was really, really good. And also, like I mentioned earlier, there is a personal connection with the General. One of the people on board of the ship is Cresta, played by Faith Omol, who turns out to be a relative of the General. And that's a bit of a theme going on throughout the box set, where you've got these family members, you've got these personal connections, which definitely pay off in Ambition's debt. But I will say another thing that I want to see them do in future box sets, in future War Room stories, is to establish brand new characters and stick with them. 
because there's a lot of characters introduced in this box set. I won't get into specifics. They don't make it out of the box set. And I think that that's a bit of a handicap because you want the idea that this is war anyone could go at any moment with the exception of characters like the general. We know that he makes it all the way to the end in this incarnation because the TV show, yada, yada, yada. But the more original characters, we know that not all of these folks are going to make it out of the time war. And I think they should use that more. I think that they shouldn't be afraid to end some of these characters or make them regenerate, which I know is kind of sacrilege because many of these people have been in the Gallifrey sets for several years. I think Narvin has been a constant in the Gallifrey sets for approaching 20 years now. He's a fan favorite character. But I think, oh, let's introduce this family member. Let's introduce this new character. Oh, but because they're not a main character, because they're not on the cover, we know they're not making it out alive. It kind of lessens the stakes, which is a bit disappointing. And once again, that's another handicap that I think that Theo Tretherway did a really good job at trying to overcome. But I, I do think that there is a threshold to how good that type of story can be, that emotional connection can be, respectfully. But with transference, what I did like is the world building. And also what we get in terms of Elystra being an absolute piece of work in this story which i re i really appreciated dramatically but don was a hard listener points the premise for the third story transference is that you've got a time lord graduate who is demonstrating a brand new piece of matrix technology only for somebody to shoot him dead at the presentation at the pitch causing him to regenerate and stealing the technology so Leela is assigned on a mission to try and figure out who tried to do the assassination mission and why, where is the stolen technology gone? Because Elystra has personal investment in Matrix-themed technology because she is a Matrix projection. Let's play a clip from Transference. Ah, Cresta. How's our patient? Cardinal. Tired, I think. He wanted rest. A luxury that I'm afraid will have to wait. Walk with me. Yes, ma'am. Rasmus tells me you know Helico well. We were at the academy together. He was always quite private, quiet, but kind and generous with his time. Will he give me his time, do you think? His new regeneration seems a little more tightly wound. Cresta, let me spell out my line of inquiry. Is Helico acting like the man you knew? Or do you have doubts? I... I I'm not sure. I Hold that thought. Leela, I hope you have good news. Your false guard used a portal to escape to Lowtown. I am continuing the search, asking those who will answer. I have been directed to a farmhouse on the outskirts. <laughs> the capital was locked down. <laughs> How did they reach Lowtown? Oh, it seems unlikely. It is the truth. There is a painting on the third floor, a gate to Lowtown that allows escape very easily. Hmm. I need you to find the intruder, bring them back, and make sure the stolen device is returned. Do not disappoint me, Leela. I do not care about your feelings. If I lost such easy prey, I would disappoint myself. Oh, shots fired. The passive aggression is so palpable. Mwah, love it. Yeah, I really like the world building of transference, particularly when Leela goes to low town. It's almost like... A cross between the Deadly Assassin and Disney's Aladdin, you know, where they go to the shanty town outside and the royalty is trying to see how the how the the proletariat live. D the dejected shanty town that's keeping the dome of the citadel propped up. It's really it's a really really good story, and I can't really get into spoilers, but I particularly like the direction that Narvin goes in. Narvin is somebody who is like almost directly involved in this potential assassination plot and i think that sean carlson does a really good job at sort of embodying the themes of the box set where you've just got these really really tired bureaucrats who honestly who can tell the difference between daleks and time lords anymore and narvin is just consistently on the back foot and even when he's trying to help with the resistance he still somehow manages to be just as morally compromised in some respects. It's a really interesting development for the character, and I want to see it built upon later. We'll see how this develops over the course of the box sets, but Transference, I can't get too deeply into it because there's a lot of spoilerific stuff there, but this was a really good one. And Ambition's Debt by Catherine Armitage directly picks up on the threads left 
uh, left hanging at the end of collaborators Catherine armitage sort of bookends the box set uh, with the story surrounding orison you know with the time winds and the bolt and everything i won't get into spoilers as to how collaborators ends and i can't dive too deeply into what happens in ambition's debt because of, of course spoilers and stuff but it was a really satisfying ending i think that Catherine kind of runs away with the box set in terms of like really effective character driven political drama where there's so many just lengthy conversation sequences the low point of ambition's debt is when it becomes like generic time lord time war conflict stuff when they're fighting off daleks and in the city and they're fighting off daleks and using anti-gravitational grenades and stuff like that stuff's really cool but it's kind of when oh this is what people might expect ho-hum time war stuff to be when the real heart the real meat of this box set and Catherine armitage's strength is the dialogue is the character relationships is the sort of more cynical west wing so it's a bit more like succession and a less comedic version of the thick of it it was a really effective closer to the story tell you what let's play a clip from ambition's debt what is this only I have the authority to call an emergency meeting. This is a sensitive matter. I found something interesting on our systems. General, if you wouldn't mind. Certainly. Secret battle plans. Heavily encrypted until the virus revealed them. Useful little virus. These plans were made by you, Alistra, and involve the deliberate deaths of thousands of Time Lords. Those plans were confidential for a reason. Because you are planning a massacre. It was not an easy decision. I think it was. I think it demonstrates that you're no longer fit for duty. I propose that Cardinal Rasmus take command of the War Room, pending an operational review. I agree. This is low. Even for you, Rasmus. This is... Let's see how well you do. Alistra's so catty. I love it. I love her so much. She's such a sassy queen. Um, yeah, so there's one issue I did have with Ambition's debt, though, and it's similar to what I was saying earlier about the use of new characters and the familial connections and stuff. There's a character introduced in the box set and then when it turns out at the end that they were super important and they were like a vital key to what was happening, honestly, that twist dropped and I was like, I have no idea who you are. I'm so sorry. And your voice is so similar to another character that I, I must, I need to go back and listen to the box set again because I think that, <laughs> I think I might have mistaken them for another character during several pivotal scenes and it really threw off what was happening in terms of like my mind's eye listening to the box set and I can also confirm though even though that's like a subjective opinion of it I've spoken to a few like Gallifrey fans and they had a few issues as well this is kind of what I was talking about earlier where you bring in these brand new characters and then you want to immediately do all of this like dramatic high stakes stuff with them you can need to put in a little bit more leg room first you can't just establish a character as like a background detail early on in the box set and then at the end it turns out that they were the vital key piece that you really should have been keeping an eye on except they probably didn't have to do that maybe a lister could have done it the whole time i don't know it kind of fell a bit flat for me but the actual story the actual like dalek plan of what they're wanting to do to this world is really grim how the characters react to it as well and the position that Elistra holds like Leela and some of the other characters by the end of the box set really sets up some interesting threads and some interesting developments for future box sets. Like I said, I wasn't super big on War Room 1 Allegiance, but Maneuvers, this is the real deal. This is what I wanted this collection to be from the beginning. I think there are some issues, but so much of them is to do with like the baseline structure of how these box sets are formulated in terms of we need to keep these cast members, but we need body counts in order to keep the stakes high. So we need to introduce new characters and then immediately like kill them off shortly. We need to tell a very long spanning story but we also need to give maneuvers a satisfying beginning middle and end which i do think it does but there are a few characters that sort of fall by the wayside because of that and that's a bit disappointing we want a berserker dalek story but we've already had one a few months back which i think is a bit disappointing but i think that georgia cook does an incredible job at taking that handicap just really diving into the characters because that is where this box set completely shines maneuvers is really good i think that there is a distinct lack of hot rassilon, so do I recommend it more than Allegiance? 
Allegiance does have Hot Rassle on, though. Now, it's a significant improvement over Allegiance, and I have no qualms with saying that feel free to start the War Room story here. Like, there's maybe a few details here, but like I said, the Gallifrey fan base is so committed that they've already filled out the TARDIS wiki pages extensively. So if you want to catch up with what happened before this, you can go on TARDIS wiki and figure it all out. Maneuvers, really really effective and strong political drama i still think that there's maybe a bit of like work to be done structurally and how it organizes the characters over the course of this lengthy long-running story to really get the most out of the potential but in terms of making the most with the pieces that they've got i really have very few complaints